بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره على نعمائه ونتوب إليه من سيئات أعمالنا ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد فايز بي تو الله دي لورد اوف دي اند هي رافت وي فايز هيم اند ثانك هيم فور ذا بليسينغ ذا كونستانت بليسينغ ذات وي ريسيف فروم هيم اند وي ريبنت تو هيم فور ذا شورت كومينجز اوف اور ديدز وي غريت اند سالوت the most noble of all prophets, our own Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his dear progenies. Sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the sixth night of our Ramadan program 2021. Yaqulullah tabaraka wa ta'ala fil Quran al-Hakim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إف ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه O you who believe, shun much conjecture as some conjectures are sin and do not spy upon one another nor backbite one another. Would any one of you desire to eat the dead flesh of his brother? You would detest it strongly. Brief recap of the last lecture's main theme. I started last lecture with a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inni akhafa alaykum ithnayn ittiba'u al-hawa wa tolu al-amal. There are two things that I'm afraid of from, for you and number one is for people to follow their desire and ego. And uh, the second one is irrational and excessive hope and expectation. Then Imam explained that ittiba'u al-hawa to become detached to one's desire and ego and nafs al-ammara distances one from truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because uh, instead of following the command of Allah, we follow the command of nafs al-ammara. And tool al-amal, the excessive and irrational hope, leads to procrastination, keep Spending, uh, sending things backward instead of dealing with it li right now. And ulama al-akhlaq, uh, the teachers of ethics and morality, have constantly grappled with this challenge. Why is it that despite the fact that we all know that the life is going to come to an end, and we are on a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, we don't spend some time preparing ourselves and, and uh, collecting sustenance for the world and for the journey to come. What is the reason for this procrastination and constantly dithering and, and not dealing with the case, with the situation properly? Amir al says, uh, one explanation for this 
could be this طول uh, الحمر so I have 70 years more to, li- to, to live 100 more years to live 80 more years to live and I will do the, the uh, tawbah and the repentance say a uh, few years from now let me enjoy my life as it is we talked about possible two reasons uh, for this one is that we don't feel comfortable facing our own sin. We have created an image that we are holier than holy and confronting repentance and confronting the sin is going to smash that image. That at the end of the day, uh, despite all the pretenses and the images that we have created, we are sinful. And we don't want the ego and the pride doesn't want to allow us to accept this. The second one, which was worse than the first, is when the heart has become so hard that uh, we don't see our sins as sins anymore. If one sees that I am committing sins, and as such, uh, I need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance, uh, then it's totally irrational not to do anything about it. But sometimes, as I pointed out a hadith a couple of nights ago, uh, that the signs of Akhir zaman which is uh, part of the eschatology and the end of time, where the frame of reference changes. We, instead of spending, I mean, focusing on ma'roof, we focus on munkar and we shun ma'roof. Tonight, I want to somehow move the conversation forward a little bit. Assume that for the sake of argument, we have already repented with all the conditions that we outline in the, in the uh, context of repentance that Amir al-Mu'mineen said. We reflected on the past and we became despondent of the past. And there is as a clear determination that we are not going to go back. Let us even go further and say that the Hukuk al-Nas and Hukuk Allah were clearly dealt with. Where do we go next? What's the next step? Those of you who remember a few nights ago, when we briefly touched upon a book by Allama Jawadi Amli, in which he, right at the beginning of the book, he, he stated that because we are travelers and wayfarers, that we're really moving forward, because of that, there are two possibilities, either the ones that pay attention to this journey and prepare themselves, or if they are fall asleep and uh, they lose. One of the things that he pointed out as travelers, it pays to, uh, to learn about the uh, pitfalls that we have to deal with as we travel through. Uh, one of the, the ones that he outlined in, in the book was the concept of ghafla, which was forgetfulness. But next, after Toba, we really need to focus on a number of what we call vices and virtues that we have in our, in our body, particularly during the month of Ramadan. If we come out of the month of Ramadan, at least one vice removed, a single vice, then Ramadan has been fully useful. But if the relationship between the vices and the virtues remain the same as the beginning of the month of Ramadan, then we haven't achieved anything. One of the most common and prevalent negative trait is backbiting, al ghiba which takes place when we gossip. And unfortunately, all people partake in some form of gossip. Whether it is in workplace, 
or sharing of family news, group texts, uh, between friends, etc., etc. Somebody once said that the WhatsApp concept is when somebody dumps the, the trash from their uh, pages into yours and you send the trash to somebody else. It literally goes in a circle without paying attention. Where is the truth here? There is a claim about Iran. I mean, what is the justification for this claim? What is the basis for this claim? Or there is a claim about such and such in, an individual. Without due attention, you just dump the whole thing, and suddenly, before you know it, if a news that was, has no basis whatsoever has been passed around to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. When we pay attention that there are institutions now being paid to damage the, the image of Islam, and we, without paying attention, we, we throw this away. So we partake in some kind of uh, gossip. Psychologists claim that gossip is part of human evolution, particularly in the past. Uh, as a form of community communication, particularly when communities where they lived traveling all the time, they lived far bet uh, in, in between. So when they met, we, they, they needed to share some of these ideas of to let everyone know what the rest of the community or the tribe was up to. If you go to internet, particularly focus on the life of tribes living in the Sahara Desert in Africa, which is literally southern Morocco, goes towards the, e towards the east. There are a group of people, nomads, that live just a small group of people by themselves. They are part of a larger uh, a clan, but the other members of the clan, they are spread around. Normally, they don't meet. There are occasions that they meet, marriage. When the son of, say, a particular group that lives 80, 100 miles from this tent wants to marry the daughter of this tent, they finally have to, to come and talk to each other. It's interesting. When you look at the, the, the video, before even the concept of marriage or, and proposals are presented, catching up with the news of the rest of the tribe becomes the primary concern, which is part of gossip. Now, so it has a function when people are living far between. But for us, it really doesn't function as, as an information source. So we, are, we don't want to somehow by gossiping to, keep, to, be, to be kept abreast of what is happening around, around us. We are oversupplied with, uh, with information. It goes beyond what ordinary mind can take within 24 hours. This is why these days one of the concepts that are being presented in premarital counseling under the heading of uh, addiction is Married counselors would ask people that want to get married and the couple, how many hours do they spend on this gadget that we have? It's a form of addiction. Granted that you have to, uh, for your work, you have to do a certain amount of research or, or contact, but once you wake up just from your sleep and you jump uh, to your phone, before even you talk to your partner or anybody else, and you spend a couple of hours on, on this uh, screen. There are now images of so-called quality time between families, that they are sitting at the same table, the son is looking at his own screen, the daughter is looking at her own screen, the mother is looking at his, her own, and the father is looking at, her, at his own. There is no communication whatsoever. What will happen? The consequence is that our kids, the younger generation, grow 
not being able to distinguish between what we call artificial world, virtual world, and the real world. Every single shooting that takes place, because the guy who came out spent six hours, seven hours on this machine, fighting so-called an elusive uh, community coming. Now he comes out. In the games, everybody is enemy friend. The notion that this is human society doesn't exist. He searches for the biggest gun possible. Where is the mentality come from? It's the virtual world. So we are oversupplied uh, with information. Gossiping has no consequences whatsoever. So the verse that I started, Ya ayyuhalladheena Avoid conjecture, because some of this is sin. Muslims and community members have certain rights. There is a hadith from the Holy Prophet as well as narrator sallallahu alayhi wasallam and other imams. Whoever says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, as Muslim, there are certain rights and that we have to protect their honor, their life, their family, their wealth. When you violate these, certainly it's a sin. They should not backbite anyone backbiting another. What? And then Quran gives a unique, detestable example. Imagine your brother or your sister is dead. Are you pre prepared to take a piece of their flesh and eat it? That's exactly what you're doing when you backbite it. So this is... Unfortunately, this is not just one verse. It's part of other verses in the Holy Quran. Wailun Surah al at the beginning of it. Woe to every backbiter and denigrator. Some people that just do nothing but character assassinate others. Do not follow or obey any contemplable one individual who swears much, slanders, who goes about with backbiting and smear campaign. So there are other verses in the Holy Quran and there are a number of hadith that we have in the Holy Quran. I mean, uh, in, in uh, the language of Ahlul Bayt that they talk about the same thing. But what is backbiting? What's the river? In the, it's basic in a nutshell, talking about a person, someone that is not present spitefully. The person is not here. The whole intention is, uh, it's a mean and nasty way of killing time by character assassinating somebody. When people get together, particularly coffee shops or these hookah lounges, they do nothing else but gossip, whether sisters or brothers. Just imagine people, just look around your own family and see. The phone, an hour, takes the time for conversation. What can you exchange within a that you cannot say it within five minutes. Once you start with the gossip, then it's the slippery stroke. One thing leads to another. Before you know it, you have committed a huge amount of backbiting to literally everyone that you know. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq narrates a hadith from the Holy Prophet who said, الجلوس في المسجد انتظار الصلاة انتظار للصلاة عبادة. The Holy Prophet said, just sitting in the mosque and absorbing the environment, the uh, the malu, is considered to be worship. 
So long as you do not disturb that feeling. Hadath is anything that makes something else bottle and negates. This is why when somebody goes to the bathroom, it's considered to be a hadath and wudu has to be redone or ghusl has to be redone. Qila ya Rasulullah wa ma yuhdath. What's the meaning of this hadath here? Qala al ikhtiyar. Backbiting. You sit in the mosque and instead of reflecting and establishing, uh, communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you start gossiping and before you know, you are backbiting. To sit in the mosque, waiting for the time of the prayer to arrive is considered to be worship. So long as one does not negate that environment and disturb it. And they said, what, is, what would negate it? He said, nothing. Within a religious context, then, riba is to say something, mainly someone else's defect, that he would not or she would not find it, he or she would find it detestable. Huwa dhikrul insan hala somebody else, bima yakra nisbatuhu ilayh, you choose someone, whether it's the sheikh or the teacher or the professor or uh, whoever, and you start going after them. There is a, uh, a wasiya from the Holy Prophet to Abu, Abu Dhar, Ridwanullah alayhi. قلت يا رسول الله ما الغيبة؟ I told the Holy Prophet what is backbiting. He said قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره. You say something about your friend in something that he doesn't like or she doesn't like. فقلت يا رسول الله فإن كان فيه الذي يذكر به. Now how about if what I'm accusing or saying against a third party is he actually or she actually has it. He has, she or he has this characteristic. If he has these faults or she has these faults and during his or her absence you uh, talk about it, then this is ghibah. But if he doesn't, if you say about somebody else, about character, or accuse him of something that he or she doesn't have it, it's a slander. And remember, the third category in Toba, if you have violated somebody's right through ghiba or anything else, or tuhma, slander, and backbiting, you need to go back to them. I remember in the, I mean, I have read a hadith that the early part of our history, people used to go around and tell each other, please tell me if I have a shortcoming. Tell me so I can correct myself. So we didn't need somebody to go and tell them behind their back. And this, unfortunately, uh, backbiting has such a wide scope here. People think it's just verbal. No. There is a hadith narrated from Aisha that he, she said, a woman came to the Holy Prophet and asked to ask question. Once she left, I somehow made a comment or, uh, with my hand that she was short. by hand, without saying anything, I indicated that she was a short woman. And the Holy Prophet said, did you know that you just backbited this lady? Go and ask her forgiveness. So the notion of uh, what we have here about backbiting is extremely extensive and wide, which we really need, uh, we really need to pay attention to.
It covers mocking, making a statement, even listening, participating in, in somebody else's uh, backbiting. Sins will be given to you if you don't make an effort to stop them. Words, glances, gestures, etc. Ra even writing. They all considered to be part of back backbiting. Why do we people backbite from a psychological point of view? There are various uh, points or statement given by psychologists. Number one, natural tendency to talk a lot and unfortunately once you become too talkative, you have less power to be able to control yourself and stop. You talk a lot, you don't have the ability to control yourself to say when is enough. Marhum Allahumma Qadi, rahmatullah uh, one of the contemporary or late contemporary uh, scholar of akhlaq in his life story or biography he used he had said that to be able to control myself and control my mouth not to respond immediately and to control this small amount of word to say in response to something so i would not slide into inadvertently into uh, backbiting, I put pebbles into my mouth for 10 years and didn't take them out during speech or conversation because now I have to struggle with the idea of how to move the pe pebble around so I will, be to I will be able to speak. That time gave me enough space to reflect. Most of us, when we get through gossip, we really have no control over our mouth. We don't know when to stop. And this slippery slope immediately causes us, particularly if the other side is intent, habitual backbiters, before we know it, we, are, we either agree with them or we make similar comments. So the natural tendency to talk a lot, once we start, unable to control our mouth. That's one group of people. The second, these are people who have psychological issues. They are not popular. And once they are not popular uh, in nature, in order to fit in into certain environment, they offer free information, which constantly is uh, false and has no reality. So this is a psychological issue. Pure malicious intent to tarnish somebody's character. There is no doubt about it. The person sets out to character assassinate someone. It's not uh, the fact that they are not aware it's natural tendency to control themselves. They are, or they are not popular. No, there is a clear intent that we start talking, but somebody has to pay for it. No matter what are the causes for such tendency, and but the social and the spiritual consequence of backbiting is immense. That we really need to pay attention. On the social context, on the social le level, it causes antipathy, suspicion, jealousy, and distances between people and fractures unity. There is a hadith, man namma laka namma alayk. The person that back backbite in front of you about somebody else, watch, they will take your information and give it to somebody else. Once it becomes habitual, they search for nitpicking and uh, take it from here somewhere else. If they want to become part of, I mean, popular with you, they provide you somebody else's information. Your information, even falsified one, has to go somewhere else. And, and most critical of all is the spiritual damage that it does. It 
really changes the essence of the soul back there. Something that we really need to pay attention to. But how do we deal with it? A few nights ago, I talked about musharata, muraqaba, muhasaba, which is part of dealing with all the vices that we have, whether it's habitual liar, habitual backbiter, habitual slanderer, etc., etc. We need to set goals, even short goals. We need to monitor, and then self-accountability and revisiting all the time to make sure that we, are, we remain within the frame of reference that we have set for ourselves. But there are other issues that we have to pay attention to. Focus on one's own shortcoming before you talk about anybody else. If I have sinned, I have no right to be audacious to talk about somebody else. My responsibility is to correct that sin first. Be mindful that whatever are said are recorded in the hereafter. So go and read Surah Qaf and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Everything. And on the day of judgment, our hands, skin, tongue, ears, eyes, and everything else, they become the witness for what we have done. So be mindful of that. Increase your knowledge so that there are no gray areas. Some people unfortunately fall into backbiting because there is no clear definition for them that exactly what is backbiting. They think if we talk only, gestures and everything else is part of it. Text, definitely, this is a new thing. Molana, during the, whole, the whole life of the Holy Prophet, there were no WhatsApp, there were no texts. So why do you call this? Uh, they forget. Yes, there were no texts at the time, but there is a clear, explicit reference to character assassination, the malicious intent. Increase your knowledge so there are no gray areas. Avoid people. This is, please, brothers and sisters, select and choose your friend carefully. Avoid people who constantly and habitually backbite, lie, and etc., etc. Go and read Najib Balagha, Amir al Mumineen, Salawatullah, Salaam He says, Stay away from certain group of people as your friends. Habitual sinners is one of them. Avoid places of gossip. If I know, if I go to house X, the only thing that is going to happen is gossiping and everything else, I should avoid that. The same way that I should avoid distraction during prayer, for example. If I have the TV in front of my eyes and I stand in front of the TV, I want to say Allahu Akbar and hope to focus. It's not going to happen. So you need to remove it. Or the radio blasting certain things and I'm trying to focus. It's not going to happen. So removing all distraction is necessary. Places that gossip takes place, avoid them. Stop backbiting and inform others that you will not participate in anything or any meeting that is going to be back, 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 backbiting. And if they start, politely leave. The verse in the Holy Quran, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَاعْرَضْ عَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرَهُ When you see people who indulge in blasphemy and disrespect and sinfulness, turn away. You cannot force somebody to uh, somehow conduct a lifestyle that forms or submits to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah has given you two, two legs to be able to, to walk away. Until they engage in a totally another discourse. Play it safe. This is the concept of ihtiyat. We have concept of ihtiyat in our sharia and the way we deal 
if I have doubt about this issue, or have, did I do my wudu or not? If I know that I, in, before this shak, I had not done my wudu, then ihtiyat tells me to go and do your wudu. Play it safe. If you are doubtful, if I were to attend the meeting, I'm going to be led into backbiting, stay away. It's not worth it. Maintain a policy of reminding each other. This used to be part of the community uh, somehow. Discipline. That people used to go around and tell each other that if you see me doing anything wrong or possibility of wrong, please correct. Maintain a policy of reminding each other which was constantly done in early Islam. These, these days, we don't. This is a month, we are close to 10 days of it, past a third is already, close to a third is gone. And if we haven't done any Toba, I read, I recited a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen when he stood in the market of Kufa looking at people, and then he said, if you spend all your life during the day swearing to sell something or buy something, and at night you go home, you go to sleep soundless. When are you going to prepare for the hereafter and get some sustenance for the journey ahead? This is the month that we have to change. If we don't change in this month, despite everything that is available, I mean, what else do we want? In other month, we are the one who go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this month, Allah has come to us and says, this is wide open. The door to my mercy is here. You are the guest. Come in. What else do we want? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from falling into this habit which is uh, spiritually totally destructive and help us to get out of it during this month as quickly as possible inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu s-salihat wa tawassu bil-hikmah wa tawassu bil-sabr wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh